What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to hit that like button. It does help out my channel a lot, and I appreciate all the support you guys have shown so far. Anyway, today we have an underused match here against Trash from my Discord server. Um, we decided to bring some UURU type teams, and I kind of just threw some stuff together that I wanted to use. I'm going hyper offense here. Uh, as usual, pretty much everything here except for the Uxie is going to kind of be dedicated to, you know, just doing some speedy killing. So, looking at the team matchup here, uh, I am very afraid of things like the Machamp that they've got. Sharpedo, uh, definitely, after a speed boost, does really well against my team. Uh, fast Sceptile, honestly, my uh, this matchup doesn't look great for me, but I kind of have to just allocate um, my win conditions here. So... I expect them to lead off with Roserade, because it didn't look like they had really too much of a dedicated lead. So I toss out the old Lemonhead, and it turns out uh, it is going to be against the Sharpedo. Now, this is fine. I've actually calced this before. Life Orb, uh, Crunch from a Sharpedo. I can definitely live one, barely. So I'm going to decide to go for the Thunder Wave here, as I really need to kind of cripple this threat. After Sharpedo gets a speed boost, my team is basically screwed. So he goes for the Crunch, and actually ends up killing me. Now that essentially tells me that <laughs> this is a choice banded Sharpedo. So haven't seen that often and it's not something that I really planned for there and that really sets me behind here early. So now I basically have to go into the only thing that can essentially handle this and that is going to be the slacking. Now I figured that they know that Sharpedo is a great matchup on my team in general especially after a speed boost so I'm expecting them to want to switch that thing out. Uh, which allows me to just go for a Giga Impact here. Basically going to kill whatever comes in. Uh, they actually end up staying in there and going for the Choice Banded Crunch on Slacking. Take a big ol' chunk of damage. And this thing does allow me to hit him with a Giga Impact. So that does take out Sharpedo. That's a big threat out of the way. But unfortunately it took care of Yuxi, who does really well against this Green Hulk looking bastard right here. And that is quite a bummer. So they bring this thing in as I have to recharge. And Machamp actually ends up going for a substitute. So of course I'm expecting this thing to set up some bulk ups, something like that behind the substitute. Uh, either way, I am definitely playing from behind here as now I have to deal with this threat. And it looks like something's probably going to have to die to be able to take care of this thing. So, uh, obviously I don't want to stay in here. I'm going to end up switching into Pinhead. I know that I can't intimidate through the Beanbag. Beanbag says, I'm not afraid of you in your pointy, your pointy head over here, Pinhead Larry. <laughs> so that is unfortunate, but as you'll see here, he actually goes for a Focus Blast, which shows me that this is in fact a special attacking Machamp, and at this point, I do not know what the hell to expect from anything. <laughs> I've seen, so far I've been thrown off by Choice Bandit Sharpedo, which I mean is standard, but you just generally see Life Orb, um, and then now we got a specially invested Machamp, which is honestly pretty awesome, but... Um, I'm going to go for the Air Slash. If it is special attacking, that tells me it probably doesn't have Rock Slide, but it then is going to have uh, like Flamethrower or Fire Blast. So I go for the Air Slash, at least able to break the Substitute, so that is fine. No more hiding for you, Mr. Mister Machamp. So he goes for a Fire Blast here, of course. It, uh, Machamp does come with the ability No Guard, which allows all of the moves to hit. And so that actually is able to take advantage of like things like Focus Blast and like there. The Fire Blast hits, no problem. So down goes Pinhead Larry, and that you know, kind of eliminates my chance at a uh, Quiver Dance Sweep, which was in the pocket, but now it's, you know, it's gone. And now at this point, uh, we're playing behind four to five at this point, and really all I can do is go back into slacking. Looking at my team, Scarf Rampardos can't come in, Sharpedo can't come in and get a kill, Doug Trio cannot, and all those speedy threats are important for me for the late game, so I do kind of just have to go into slacking here. I know that I am going to be faster, and a Giga Impact will essentially kill something. In this match has so far been basically me just sending in slacking. There's really nothing in this tier that can switch into a choice banded slacking. So they decide to go into Roserade here. Um, I'm thinking, all right, this thing's gonna die, get the Giga Impact off and just absolutely obliterate this flower. But Roserade says, thank again, bitch, I have this sash. And somehow that allows me to live that. So I have to stay in here and recharge, which is the unfortunate part about using that move. Um, and it does allow them to just go for a sleep powder. So it does hit, uh, which is annoying. And now Brad, the already, already the sleepiest motherfucker on the battlefield is now just fully asleep. And, you know, he's just extra loafing around now. So, 
Uh, now I have to establish what I'm gonna do here. I decide he's probably gonna set up some hazards or something like that. Um, so I could potentially get in Sharpedo and then be able to outspeed and then knock it out. So that is pretty much all I can really do. I do wanna save slacking in the back there. And I bring in half of my shark. Playing just absolutely from behind from turn one here. They end up actually going for a switch as well, so they end up bringing in the Machamp once again. And this is a Pokemon still that I really don't have anything for. If it didn't have a substitute up initially, um, you know, Masquerade would have been able to put it in range uh, to where a Liquidation would kill. But really, looking at my squad, there's literally nothing I have that can switch into this. Um, and so I essentially have to just go for a Liquidation here. I can at least get as much damage off as possible and finish it off with my fast sweepers later on. There's still a, a pretty good chance that I can win this with the Pokemon that I have left. Uh, things like Dugtrio and the Rampardos are gonna be able to outspeed and hit everything they have left really hard. So I go for the liquidation there. Uh, they go for the focus blast. Unfortunately, no more focus misses when you're using a, a no guard Machamp. So that takes care of Sharpedo, which really sucks because that thing could have done some great work to things like they have like the Sceptile. I uh, could have outsped the Roserade and killed it, but still this damn Machamp is able to thrive because of that turn one crunch against Yuxi, which I, to be fair, I probably should have switched out, but I didn't expect that choice ban. So now I can at least bring in the most gangster hot dogs on this side of Sinnoh. I can outspeed, finish them off with an earthquake, and at this point, they actually don't know that I am choice banned. So I can kind of use that to my advantage a little bit here. Um, that takes care of my champ. Fucking finally, good to see that green asshole die. And in comes the Kecleon. So Kecleon ordinarily could be able to take an Earthquake, but as I'm sitting here thinking about it, Choice Band from Max Attack Doug Trio, it is actually going to be able to knock this thing out. Um, so I just go for the EQ here, and that is going to take out Mariguana. So that is amazing. And it's looking actually like I have a chance here. Now the Pokemon they have left are going to be that Roserade at 1 HP. They have Sceptile, and they have a Pachirisu in the back. So in comes Sceptile. And I know that Dugtrio definitely has uh, a win against the rest of their Pokemon. Earthquake, um, once this Septal is taken care of, can kind of just win the match for me here. So I go into the Slacking once again. Slacking has just been putting in overtime here, switching in and out. Uh, but he's still napping, he doesn't give a shit. So this thing actually ends up going for a Swords Dance. And, you know, ordinarily that is scary. But, I mean, looking at the rest of my team, pretty much one hit kill even if they didn't have the Swords Dance from like a Leaf Blade. So I'm just going to go for a Sucker Punch here in hopes that I wake up. But, you know, I'm fucking bred, so I'm just going to take another nap as the Leaf Blade does take me out. Now, here is the plan. I can easily win this match. All I have to do is go into Rampardos here. I can outspeed because I'm Choice Scarf. And a Head Smash does knock out Sceptile uh, because that thing is lacking in bulk. So once I take that thing out, then all that's left is going to be... Uh, that Roserade at 1 HP, I outspeed with that, I kill that thing, and then Pachirisu, no matter what happens, dies to Dugtrio. So, I bring in Rampardos here, ready to just give out some good head. I'm thinking, who wants some free head? Inceptile's looking pretty, pretty willing. So, I go for the Head Smash, thinking, please do not miss. Head Smash, I do need to click you, the only, uh, only attack that kills here. Um, I go for it here. It does connect, and it is going to be Focus Sash, which is like, what the hell. So second Focus Sash of the match, kind of just honey dicking me here. <laughs> and that allows it to live, takes me out with the Leaf Blade, and good head goes down. But that's fine. Now it's gonna come down to a little bit closer of a match here as all I have left is gonna be my hot dog. So looking at Doug Trio and Sceptile, we actually have the same exact speed. So this is gonna come down to a coin flip on who goes first. I go for the Earthquake to lock myself into that against the rest of the Pokemon there. And speed tie, I really didn't think this match was going to come down to it. So <laughs> he actually ends up winning it, slices up my hot dogs like it's a 4th of July barbecue. And you hate to see it. Now, that was a very close match. It kind of came down right to the end there. Focus Sash, the double Sash really, really got me. Not going to lie. But played from behind really that entire match. I mean, it really, I didn't have any momentum really going into it and kind of just had to work with what I had. I definitely made some probable misplays, but you know, you kind of just, it's the way she goes. Anyway, um, he actually told me after the match that um, Sceptile was in fact unburdened and after activating its Focus Sash item, it had higher speed than uh, the Doug Trio and it did outspeed regardless. Now I could have, if I wasn't choice banded, finished it off with a Sucker Punch and then proceeded to kill his last two mods just with Earthquake. Um, so the choice band kind of came back to bite me as well, but 
Um, still, regardless, a really fun match, and hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button on this video if you did enjoy, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.